Welcome. In this video, we'll explore the main things you should consider when giving external users access to data in Experience Cloud. We'll start by discussing the different types of Experience Cloud sites and why it's important to think through data access. Then we'll identify key questions to help you determine visibility levels for your site. And finally, we'll explain how to control access to object data. Salesforce Experience Cloud allows you to connect with customers and empower partners by providing beautifully branded digital experiences that are connected to your CRM. With Experience Cloud, you can build marketing or corporate sites to engage new and current customers, customer account portals to personalize customer experiences, partner portals to communicate and collaborate with partners, help centers or self-service communities to provide customer service and support, and mobile-friendly sites and apps to distribute on the App Store and Google Play. Regardless of whether you call it a portal, help forum, or community, your Experience Cloud site is a great place to engage with customers and partners and support their unique needs through accessible and inviting digital experiences. One commonality among Experience Cloud sites is their ability to expose data from your CRM to external users. Think about a customer who does a Google search and lands on a public help forum site. There, they can view help articles surfaced from a knowledge base and service cloud and get answers to frequently asked questions. This sort of self-service, public access site makes it easy for visitors to find answers themselves instead of filing cases through customer support. Or, consider a partner agency that's looking to register a deal in a partner portal or collaborate with others on a shared pool of leads a partner site allows visitors to access and collaborate using CRM data, which helps to minimize channel conflict and provide early pipeline visibility. Both of these examples are about exposing data from Salesforce into websites for users to access. And that's why it is extremely important to think through your data access rules before you get started. Before we dive into a security overview, I want to call out two excellent video series called Who Sees What? and Who Sees What in Experience Cloud. The first is an introductory series of videos that goes through the basic rules of data visibility and access for any Salesforce org. And the second goes into specifics of data access with Experience Cloud. We highly recommend reviewing this content. One of the basic principles covered in both series is that your data access and security approach must be multi-layered. You start at the org level, closing down access only to those that need it. Then move to the object record and field levels, where there are various tools to help you open up and shut down access as needed. Today, we will review just the first three levels, site visibility at the org level, object access, and record access. In addition to site visibility, we will be discussing guest user access since these are the baseline restrictions needed to protect your company's data. Let's look at these elements now. To determine site user visibility, start by asking yourself the following questions. Who are your users? Are they within the same company? Is this a self-service site? Is this a partner site? Then, should users see each other at all? And finally, should users see one another's data? Once you have a clear idea of what your visibility needs are, you can manage the org settings for site user visibility in-app. To start, you need to first enable site user visibility. From Setup, enter Sharing Settings in the Quick Find box, and then select Sharing Settings. Click Edit in the organization-wide defaults area. Enable site user visibility. Click Save. Remember, the site user visibility setting in sharing settings is org-wide. Never use this setting to grant visibility to other users. The site user visibility setting doesn't control guest user visibility. Guest user visibility is done on a community-by-community -community basis. To give user visibility to site users, enable see other members of this site on a site-by-site -site basis. For more details, check out the Site User Visibility Best Practices article on help.salesforce.com. After securing site access, you can move on to Guest User Access. Anyone who browses the content of a site without logging in is considered a guest 
or an unauthenticated user. Guest users can participate on your site, but do not share any data about themselves with you. Ask yourself the following questions. Do you want to use guest users? And if so, what data do you want to expose to guest users? The guest user profile lives within Setup and Experience Cloud. Each guest user profile is linked to an Experience Cloud site, so if you have multiple sites, you can have multiple guest user profiles. The guest user profile is designed to control public or unauthenticated access to data, content, and objects in your site. This way, guests can visit your site without having to log in, and your data remains secure. Once you enable the guest user profile, by default this profile is incredibly restrictive, with no access to object data. After you've enabled the guest user profile, based on your business need, you'll need to open up access to Salesforce objects. You can get really granular with guest user access, even down to the field level. There are a couple of things to note about guest users. First, guest users are always active in an org, so they have access to a site as long as the site is active and public. Also, it's important to set a default record owner for records created by guests. You can set a default owner on a site-by-site -site basis. Guest users can't be owners of records in the org. If you decide you do want to authenticate users, you will need to decide how to go about this process. One option is to allow anyone who wants to self-register on your site with only an email and a password. Another option is to pre-register users if you have a list of contacts that you want to have access to the site. For more information about registering users, check out the documentation on our help portal. Now let's move on to object data. We've secured our site and now we need to decide what object data we want our guest users to have access to. You can control who has access to object data based on a profile or permission set. You can use profiles to set object properties, general permissions, and system permissions. It's best practice to keep the number of profiles you have to a minimum. To set access to object data using a profile, go into the profile and follow these steps. Click Object Settings. Find the object you're looking for from the dropdown. Click Edit and provide Read, Edit, or Create Access. You use permission sets to assign permissions to subsets of users who need additional capabilities. To create a permission set, follow these steps. From Salesforce Setup Search Permission Sets. Click New. Provide a name for your permission set and click Save. Next, open System Permissions and search for the specific permission needed. Once you find the checkbox, click Save and you're done. There are a couple of ways to open up access at the record level. Let's start with sharing sets. Sharing sets are used to provide site users access to records they do not own. To create a sharing set, follow these steps. From Setup, enter Digital Experiences in the Quick Find box and then select Digital Experiences, Settings. In the Sharing Sets related list, click New to create a sharing set. Fill in the label and sharing set name fields. Label is the sharing set label as it appears on the user interface. Sharing set name is the unique name used by the API. Enter a description. Select the profiles of the users to whom you want to provide access. Select the objects you want to grant access to. In the Configure Access section, click Setup next to an object name to configure access for the selected profiles, or click Dell to remove access settings for an object. Grant access based on an account or contact lookup. To determine the account or contact lookup on the user, select a value in the user drop-down list. To determine the account or contact lookup on the target object, select a value in the target object field. Choose an access level of read-only or read-write. If the object's organization-wide sharing setting is public read-only, then only read-write is available. Click Update and then Save. You should consider a few things when creating sharing sets. Sharing sets are available to all community licenses. 
Records shared using sharing sets aren't visible via org-wide defaults, role hierarchies, or sharing rules. You can only create one sharing set per object and per profile. Data shared through sharing sets is visible in reports and dashboards. Now let's discuss opening up record access using share groups. Share groups are used to share records owned by non-role-based users with role-based users. To create a share group, follow these steps. From Setup, enter Digital Experiences in the Quick Find box, and then select Digital Experiences, Settings. Click the name of the sharing set you want to associate with your new share group. Click the Share Group Settings tab. Click Activate to turn on the share group. Note that activating the share group can take a while. You'll receive an email when the process is complete. Click Edit to add users to the share group. You can add both internal users from your org as well as external users from the same parent account as the high volume user. From the search drop down, select the type of member to add. If you don't see the member you want to add, enter keywords in the search box and click Find. Select members from the available members box and click Add to add them to the group. Click Save. Consider the following things when creating share groups. A share group is associated with a sharing set. You can only have one share group per sharing set. A share group grants full read or write edit access to records owned by users in a sharing set. I want to point out that the type of record sharing you can configure depends on the community license you have. So if you have a non-role based CC license, you can only use sharing sets. But if you have a CC plus or partner license, you can use both sharing sets and sharing rules. We've covered a lot of information here today, so if you need more support with sharing settings for Experience Cloud, feel free to request a one-on-one -on -one session with one of our Salesforce experts. For more information, check out help.salesforce.com or visit us on the trail at trailhead.salesforce.com. Thanks for watching.